In 1995, specifically on October 4th, a landmark anime would be released. Some calling it one of the greatest ever conceived. Well, there's not so much. That show was called Neon Genesis Evangelion, and no matter what your personal opinion on the show is, it's hard to argue that it didn't leave a major impact on the world of anime. And if you've watched the show, at least in its original incarnation, you know that it could be equally as thought-provoking as well as controversial. It delved into a lot of taboo and, for a lack of a better word, kind of fucked up topics. Yet the show itself wouldn't be the only controversial item spawned from the franchise. Very soon after its release, a mysterious and strikingly very high quality pornographic movie starring the cast of this anime would begin circulating in foreign markets and on the internet, with some rumors even claiming the original creators of the anime may have had a hand in its creation. That is just speculation, though. However, it's not out of the realm of impossibility, as Gynex, the producers of Neon Genesis Evangelion, have actually been known to sanction official pornographic materials of their properties, including Evangelion. We've talked extensively in the past about the strange censorship laws in Japan, but we've never actually really touched on copyright laws there. And that's where doujinshis come into play. Not all of these are hentai, but this market is filled with unlicensed pornographic material for many of our favorite anime characters. So today we're going to look at the wide world of bootleg pornography in Japan, as well as try to shed a little bit of light on the Evangelion hentai known as the Human Instrumentality Project. For those of you that have not seen the Evangelion movie entitled Human Instrumentality Project, which is probably a good thing, I'll summarize the film itself as online there exists numerous film synopses that an individual can read. Basically, it follows the plot from the show, kinda, where the main character Shinji enters into Nerve headquarters. The organization his father is at the helm of. However, instead of riding around in Mecca and various Jesus symbolism coming into play, Shinji finds out that his dad is basically making everyone at Nerve have a giant orgy in an attempt to save humanity. Classy. And that sums up the story pretty well. Evangelion Human Instrumentality Project is very, very easy to find on the clear web of the internet. However, I wouldn't recommend looking it up. Unless you want to be on someone's FBI list, cause uh... Yeah. But that's not right! What is fascinating about this is that for a supposed low-budget fan production, its quality level is that of anime from the early 90s. You can find clips and images that have all the pornographic material cut from it, and even just looking at those, you can kind of tell it looks a little suspect to just be some sort of fan project. Looking online, there isn't much in the way of information in regards to the production or even the year it came out. However, most Evangelion fan sites state it came out before the show's conclusion on March 27th, 1996. Mash it? No. So for obvious reasons, I'm not going to show the film here, and you can probably take a guess that a lot of information isn't really readily available to just kind of look up whenever you want to, as technically here in the West, this shit's pretty illegal. From the research I was able to do on this particular film, in both kanji and in English, I could only find one website that had any concrete information. Well, technically two, but I'll explain that in a second. The fan community around Evangelion is actually a really strong one, and they don't really take kindly to a lot of things that degrade that particular anime, as when I actually looked back as to a couple of time frames that I found that could have been the potential time that this hentai was leaked online, um, most of these old forums just really just talked about how much the idea of a Neon Genesis Evangelion just absolutely disgusted them. So their distaste for the project was very well known. There's a pretty cool Evangelion fan website entitled evamonkey.com, and if you're into Neon Genesis Evangelion, you might get a kick out of this site as they talk a lot about the show, theories, various cons they've been to, etc, etc, etc. In 2002, an article written for the site, they discussed the potential origins of this movie. Being one of the premier Evangelion fan sites, even they didn't have a definitive answer as to where this movie had come from. Interestingly enough though, I found that the Eva Monkey site wasn't actually online until 2003, and this site isn't the original source of this article. It's actually linked to another website entitled AnimeNation.net, which is still pretty active, but 
also does not have that much in terms of additional information on this particular film. They did have a couple of really good guesses that actually coincide with a couple ideas I had of my own, but I'll touch on those a little bit later. As of the recording of this video, I have reached out to both Animation.net and Ava Monkey on if any additional information regarding this topic has surfaced. So I can't show the movie. There's almost nothing about its production available online, so this is the end of the video, right? There is another avenue we can look at. Sure, we may not know some of the more intricate details on this particular hentai movie. However, there are certain assumptions that can be made based on the time frame as well as certain facts that are available. Thus, we entered into the world of Asian bootlegs, simply known as doujinshis. Doujinshis in Japan are mangas and slash or anime that are independently created and self-published either in books or magazines for people to buy and read. Oftentimes they are original stories, but because of Japan's copyright laws, sometimes they will also include characters from trademark properties. It's an oversimplification, but fan fiction. And here's the thing, it's not just your average Joe making these, no, 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 no. Oftentimes the very same authors of these copyrighted works will in fact create doujinshis on their own. So go on YouTube, Tumblr, DeviantArt, wherever it is you like to go to look at artwork, and you'll find that there is an overabundance of fan produced content out there just ready for consumption. Hell, the other day I saw a badass like recreation trailer of the Thundercats intro, just it was all in 3D and it did so well that the guy's kickstarting its whole thing. That's a whole nother topic for another time. But the thing is, back in the day, this sort of thing wasn't as predominant. However, anime doujinshis and specifically were often very, very hard to come by as the manpower required to create animation of the highest caliber in the 90s wasn't something that could easily just be done with a couple of guys. We just didn't have a lot of these open source tools that were ready and available for anyone to use when they wanted to. With that being said, there are some notable exceptions, namely doujinshis based off Magic Knight Ray Earth, Tenshi Muyo, and Sailor Moon. All varying in quality. To quote Animation.net's Ask John from a 2007 article on if there are fan created anime, he said, quote, Many of these works seem to be erotica, perhaps because only sex provides enough motivation for amateur artists to complete the arduous task of creating fan-made animation. Well, he's not wrong. There is a ton more to cover from doujinshis in general in the future, but for now I want to focus on this particular topic. However, why even bring this up? Because there really isn't anything to link Gainax to hentai or doujinshis, is there? Well, personally, if you were to ask me, I think Gainax, or at the very least the creator, Hiyeki Ano, was involved in this porno. Now, some of this is based on real facts, while others are complete speculation and a little bit of connecting the dots a la conspiracy theory style. But I do feel a few of those pieces of evidence could point to the truth. The first being the very anecdotal and based on a personal recollection from myself. So I distinctly remember reading about this online like five, six, maybe even seven years ago when they were talking about the subject because they said that the actual production of this was done by the people in Gainax, or at least in-house. And the way it was done was either the creators of it were bored or was being used as test footage or something. I don't remember exactly what they said. But the problem is I can't remember for the life of me where I saw this at. Then again, now I sound like the kid that knows a kid that knows a guy that knows a guy whose uncle works for Nintendo. So it may have never even happened at all. Now that my bullshit testimonial is out of the way, we can look at some of the more hard evidence that suggests that this film may have been an in-house production from Gaimax. The first being to look at the anime itself. Like I said before, clips and images exist online without any of the porno in it. And if you were to compare them side by side, there's enough there to show that the two share a very, very, very close resemblance. Especially if we were to compare the non-director's cut or special edition versions of Evangelion to the hentai. A lot of the original coloring and art style shines through here. It's not spot on to the TV show by any stretch of the imagination, but if Gainax had produced this to be released at a later time, this could have easily served as great test footage for a potential product in the future. Switching gears a bit, one important thing to notice is that the hentai itself is censored. However, this is an important factor in where this particular film came from. Why go to all the trouble of creating your own fan-based porno parody that's just going to be for individual consumption, just for yourself, and then censor it anyway? Honestly, it just doesn't make any sense. What's even more interesting is the fact that they are in line almost perfectly with Japanese censorship laws. 
Doing research, I saw a lot of people online saying that it was most likely a Hong Kong production given the Chinese subtitles. However, those could have easily been added in later, so this adds even more credence that it was sold or at least at some point was intended for Japanese consumption, as it would be able to pass censorship laws in Japan. I can't really take credit for this, as the idea was put forth by Ava Monkey as well as AnimeNation.net, so full credit goes to them for pointing this out. Next, a very rare English fan dub and sub exists online. Luckily, screen caps exist that show the opening credits crawl. From the English sub, no mention is made of it being a fan parody or anything of the sort. In fact, the video itself says that it is not made for public consumption or to be sold. Now, I understand Japanese copyright law states it is illegal to resell copywritten works. And yeah, the reason doujinshis are so popular and are not scrutinized as often is because the manga slash anime companies can be super lax on regular regulation for their particular properties. To me though, this seems a little bit on the nose. Before we go any further, I do want to touch a little more on the legality of doujinshis though. While it is true that it is illegal to use copyright entities as it is written into Japanese law, we need only look at Nintendo and their swift dick of justice to the various fan projects that people were creating just for fun. However, in my research, I found a lot of manga slash anime companies are not only okay with doujinshis, but honestly often encourage it. To them, it's just free publicity for their products. Charging for doujinshis is a bit more of a gray area, as physical copies do exist in various bootleg markets, etc. With this in mind, I did come across an interesting find in regards to series creator Hideaki Anno. As apparently, after creating the show Gunbuster, but before creating Neon Genesis Evangelion, he directed a hentai stripping game for the PC-98 in 1990. Get out! In a thread I found on Reddit, apparently after the creation of the series Gunbuster, Hideaki Anno went on to direct this porn trivia game based off of his own characters. Which is very surprising because everything I've read on the series creator, he's like very, very anti-escapism in almost every single form. Granted, this came out 30 years ago. People change a lot in one year. Give us 30 and we're basically completely different people. So at the time, Hideaki Anno wasn't completely against the idea of creating pornography. That brings us to Gainax, who not only has encouraged erotic style doujinshis, but has also officially sanctioned Evangelion erotic merchandise. Seriously. Now, keep in mind, it isn't anything super graphic. However, they have officially sanctioned erotic model kits as well as various PC games for the people to purchase back in the 90s. There's other media from some of their other properties that they've officially sanctioned um, in the past. However, I want to focus on Evangelion. So it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility that they may have had a hand in creating the Evangelion porno. As I read upon the history of the show via its wiki page that initially it didn't do well in its initial children's time slot. Hideaki Anno stating kids should be taught from an early age about what life is actually like. It wasn't until the show moved to a more adult time slot that it actually began to receive the recognition it has today. And hey, adults do like porn, right? All joking aside, they were experimenting with the ideas, so I feel like it's entirely plausible via a couple scenarios. If this was produced by Gainax, I feel like it's entirely possible it was made as an early test video before the higher ups of the company decided to scrap the whole idea as indicated earlier from the video that the movie wasn't for public consumption. They weren't against creating hentai-related media for Neon Genesis Evangelion, so perhaps it was created to test the waters and see if they would actually go through with a full production scale, but ultimately was shelved before leaking onto the internet. Another could be that it was Hideaki Anno's doujinshi himself, and was never intended to leave a private collection. The man did create a strip game based off of another of his franchises. With a few team members from the show and some stock footage, wham bam, we got a porn man. Plus in all the years that this thing's been floating around, nobody's claimed ownership. Not one person. Not one person has claimed ownership of this fucking film. And it's considered mythical in some circles. And nobody from any country has tried to take credit for its creation. Again, I want to say this is all speculation and conspiracy heavy, so it could all literally just be a wild goose chase. This, however, brings us to the end of our little dot connecting. Now, I don't think this is the end of the story. Not by a long shot. Like I said before, the video is extremely taboo and information is scant at best, but I genuinely believe there is more information out there. Sure, it probably was sold in Hong Kong bootleg markets and all the usual suspects, but to have it be around for almost 30 years and no one knows who did it seems a little too convenient.
I don't know. I could just be blowing mad smoke when it comes to this entire topic, but something's telling me that I'm going to have to do an update to this video in the future. I have no idea when, where, how, or anything along those lines. I just feel like it's going to happen at some point. But who knows? Time will tell, right? Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.